Hey STAT students, today we're looking at displaying and describing categorical data. Now, the analysis of data is basically the act of taking a whole bunch of data and trying to make sense of it. So let's look at a whole bunch of data, okay? Here we have, uh, here we have the list of people aboard the Titanic, that is the British Ocean Liner that that uh, sank in the North Atlantic about 100 years ago. Uh, and you can see here that we have, um, over here we have the gender, the, the, the sex of the, uh, of the individual, the individual's name, their age, the class that they were uh, traveling in, that is first class, second class, third class, or crew. Here's a more specific description of the class, of the town that they boarded, the occupation that the person had, and the outcome, that is, whether they died or whether they were found alive uh, when the boat sank. So, gobs and gobs of data, even more so when you think, this is just the first page. It goes on and on and on and on for 2,000 people, more than 2,000 people. So, if we tried to look at this and make sense of it, it would, it would be impossible, okay? Because th there's just too much stuff to soak in here. So instead what we have to do is we have to look at specific things and count them up or average them or something like that. And since we're looking at categorical data, you can't average them. You can just count them up. So when I say look at specific things, I mean look at specific variables. Okay? When I was talking about these different uh, 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 descriptions here, those are the variables. And by, I mean, like, sex is a variable. Name would be not a very useful variable, but a variable. Age is a variable. As a matter of fact, age is the only variable here that is a quantitative variable because we can measure it in years. Uh, everything else here, class, where they boarded, the occupation, and the survival, those are all different variables. So one way to make sense of this is to look at each individual variable and uh, see what we can see. Okay? So uh, what do we do? We summarize and we illustrate. And by summarize, here's an example. How many men were on board? How many women? Well, as a matter of fact, we see that out of 200, there are 2,208 people, 1,719 were men, okay, or were male. A lot of males on board. Uh, this is what's known as a frequency table. And this is a relative frequency table. It's a relative frequency table because we say 78% of the men, 78% relative to the total, were male and 22% relative to the total were female. Uh, we can also illustrate these data by uh, a bar chart or by a pie chart. Bar charts are good for showing absolute numbers. We could look over here and see, okay, yeah, about uh, 1,700 or so are, are male and about 500 or so are female. Pie charts are much better at looking at percentages. Uh, maybe it's because we're used to looking at clocks but uh, you can look at this and very quickly see, oh, okay, slightly more than three quarters of the people on there were male. Uh, pictures give us information really, really quickly. Our eyes are really good at picking that up. So that's one thing we might be interested in, the, uh, the gender, the sex of the passengers. Another thing we might be interested in would be the class, how they were traveling. We have first class, second class, third class, and crew. And... Uh, here are the, the corresponding numbers. Here are the corresponding percentages in the, uh, the relative frequency table. Um, and from the relative frequency table, we see, wow, 40% of the people were crew. That's, uh, that means only 60% of the people on board were passengers. That's a lot of people working on that boat. And uh, it's, it becomes even more apparent when you look at the bar chart. Uh, big old crew, okay, smallest group here was second class. Uh, first and second class are both quite small. And now when you look here, you realize, wow, you add the crew and third class together, that's almost three quarters of the, of the boat. So uh, third class out of the passengers was by far the biggest group, and then the biggest group overall was crew. Now, there's one more way that we can, uh, that we can illustrate this data, and that is with a pie chart that looks, come on, there it is. Okay, that is a pie chart that looks like this. Now, as you can see, this is kind of snazzy because it's, uh, it now has a third dimension. We're sort of lying this disc on its side, and uh, it has some perspective to it. 
Well, not only is it snazzy, it's also bad. Okay? This is a bad illustration. Why is it a bad il illustration? Well, because when I look at this, I say, wow, the largest group is this green group here, third class. Not true. Crew is bigger than third class. It's just this particular, this particular illustration makes the purple section look smaller than the, than the green section. Not only that, the red section, second class, looks bigger than the blue section, first class. Again, wrong. Second class is actually slightly smaller than third class. This is a bad illustration. The reason it's bad, it violates a principle called the area principle that is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It says, the area of this green thing here needs to correspond to 32% of the area of the total. And in this case, it doesn't. So, don't do that. Okay? Now, let's look at Let's look at the reason that the Titanic was famous. That is, a lot of people died. All right. Uh, here's another variable, the variable of survival. And uh, what we see is that 712 people were found alive, 1,496 people died, more than twice as many people died as, uh, as survived, as we can see from this uh, relative frequency table here. 68% uh, of the people died. Uh, ooh, that's rough. Uh, and here on this bar chart, you can see that the bar for the dead is much, much greater than the bar for the living. And in the uh, uh, pie chart, again, 68% of the, of the people died and only 32% of the people were alive. Okay? So, bar charts, pie charts, really good ways of displaying categorical data. Uh, sometimes we will see another kind of, uh, of uh, bar chart, one that uses pictures. Instead of, uh, instead of just regular bars. Um, again, not a good way to display data. This is why. Uh, this picture here, you can see it gets up to you know, about 700 or so, which is the, the number of people alive. This picture gets up to about 1,500, which is the number of people that died. But again, it violates the area principle because as we make this taller here, it also gets wider. And so instead of looking about twice as big, this looks about four times as big as this picture here. So again, it violates the area principle and we should not use it. Okay, uh, now we're going to move from looking at just one variable to looking at two variables. That is, instead of looking at univariate data, we're going to look at bivariate data. So here, in this table here, this is called a contingency table. Okay. We're looking at two variables. We're looking at survival and we're looking at gender or sex. So now this tells us a little bit more. It shows us uh, these are the, the, the numbers that we had already seen before, that 1,496 people died. Uh, but now we see that out of those 1,496, 1,366 were men. Okay? It was a bad day to be a guy. Uh, so, uh, so now we see out of all the people who, uh, who were on board, 62% of them were males that died. This gets even more uh, uh, obvious when you look at the graphics. Whoa! Out of the people who were found alive, it's about the same uh, number of men as women, about the same number as males as females, but out of those who died, overwhelmingly male. Eesh. Okay? Here? Two pie charts. This is a good way of, uh, of comparing uh, 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 variables. Uh, two pie charts, one for males, one for females. And you can see that this one is overwhelmingly red. This one is overwhelmingly blue. Wow. So if, uh, if you're a woman on the Titanic, the chances was, were actually, actually quite good that you would survive. Because uh, out of the women on board, 359 were found alive, 130 died. Still not a good day, okay, if 130 died, but still way better to be female on the Titanic than it was to be male, as this graphic can show you. So again, with, uh, with bivariate data, you can still use bar charts, you use generally two pie charts, uh, and it illustrates the data quite well. Um, ah, here's another way of illustrating data. A segmented bar chart. And what the segmented bar chart does is... Uh, uh, Basically, it takes, it takes this and makes it one bar. And so now we can see, out of the people who are found alive, 
yeah, about 50% of them were male and 50% were female. And out of the people who died, uh, slightly more than 90% of them were male. We can see that from the segmented bar chart. So segmented bar charts are very, very good at showing percentages. Uh, they do nothing to show us uh, actual numbers, but they're really good at showing percentages. Um, here, what do we have? Oh, here we're looking at, uh, this is another, uh, another uh, contingency table, but this time instead of looking at sex and survival, this time we're looking at class and survival. So now we can see, uh, we can see uh, uh, what is the, uh, what's the probability, or, what, or how, how do people survive from first class, second class, third class, and crew. And uh, the numbers are, are interesting. I find the, the uh, illustrations actually more interesting because now you can look over here and see, wow, first class, more people lived than died. In second class, more people died than lived, but not a whole lot more. Third class, it was bad to be third class. Crew, it was really bad to be crew. And we can look down here at the, uh, um, the relative frequency table and see, wow, out of the crew, 40% of the, the boat was crew, but 31%, uh, so, so slightly more than three-fourths of the 40%, uh, died. And same thing here with third class, about three-fourths of them died. So, uh, oh, and here we go. The segmented bar chart tells us exactly that, that uh, only about 25% each of crew in third class survived, whereas a little bit more than 40% of uh, second class died, uh, survived and actually more than 60% of first class survived. So again, these illustrations, the segment, segmented bar charts, the bar charts, and the pie charts, a really fast way of getting uh, uh, an idea of what went on on this horrible voyage. Um, okay, now it's time to look at marginal distributions and conditional distributions. Okay, so here we have our contingency table from, uh, from before. This is class and survival. The marginal distribution is the di distribution uh, found in the margins, that is, the totals. Okay? Basically, it's looking at bivariate data and ignoring one of the variables. From the marginal distribution, we can see things like 68% of all passengers died. That is, we take the 1,496 and divide it by 2,208 we see that 15% of all passengers were traveling first class, okay? Now we're looking at the 324 and dividing it by 2,228. So with the marginal distribution, really you're only looking at one variable. With conditional distributions, you're looking uh, at one particular column or one particular row, but not, not the total, okay? So what we see in the conditional distribution is 76% of all crew members died. That is, you take the, uh, the 679 and divide it by 891 to get 76%. Or 38% of all first class passengers died. We're just looking at this column here and seeing, okay, 123 of the 324 died. Or we could look at a row, like just look at the people who lived, and we can see, okay, 28% of all those who lived were traveling first class. You take the first class people and divide them by the total number of people who lived. So those are the conditional distributions. Now, um, uh, here we go. Here's a conditional distribution, and here's a marginal distribution, and actually they're relative distributions as well, because I'm displaying these numbers uh, as percentages. As we see, in first class, 62% of the people lived, 38% of the people died. That's the conditional distribution. As a whole, the marginal distribution, 32% of the people lived and 68% of the people died. Okay? As you can see, 62%, 32%, different numbers. Okay? This distribution is not, the, or this relative distribution is not the same as this relative distribution. If the conditional relative distribution and the marginal relative distribution are significantly different, we say that these two variables, class and survival, are not independent.
okay? If we had pretty much the same numbers, or really close to the same numbers here, if the same percentage of, the same percentage of first class people that survived were about the same percentage as the, uh, the, the total number of people of the boat who died, or the total percentage of the people of the boat who died, then we would say, yeah, they're independent. That is, class wouldn't affect your, uh, your survival, or survival wouldn't affect your class, okay? But as it is, what we see is, it was a good day to be first class and a terrible day to be crew, okay? And if, and if, uh, uh, if there's a different survival for first class than crew, then the variables are not independent. Okay, uh, now, last thing on this video that I want to look at is something called Simpson's Paradox. We're going to get off the Titanic now, and we're going to, we're going to go to California to uh, uh, UC Berkeley, okay? And we're also going to jump forward about 70 years to the year 19, or actually 60 years, I guess, to the year 1973. Now, what happened was uh, a bunch of people uh, applied to grad school at UC Berkeley, and uh, here are the numbers of the six largest departments uh, in the uh, University of California, Berkeley, graduate school, and the number of men who applied, the number of women who applied, the number of men who were admitted, the number of uh, men who did not get in, uh, and uh, really the, the, the more important numbers here are the admission rates. 44% of males were admitted, 30% of females were admitted, giving a total admission rate of 38%. Now, women didn't like this. They said, hey, you're accepting men at a higher rate than you're accepting women. We call foul. And so Berkeley said, whoa, okay, well, let's see what's going on. Let's look at the departments. Let's break this down. Whoa. A lot of data. Okay? Let's break this down by department. Now, I don't know exactly what departments these were, so we're just calling them A, B, C, D, E, and F. But here's the number of men that were admitted, denied, and the total. The number of women who were admitted, denied, and the total. And then we total everything up here. And you can see this bottom row here corresponds to the numbers that we have up here. Here's the total number of men admitted, the total number of men that applied, the total number of women who were admitted, the total number of women who applied. And uh, really what's more interesting, though, is the admission rate of all the departments. Here's the total admission rate for men, 44%. Here's the total admission rate for women, 30%. So now we can look at the departments and see what, what departments are the problem departments for women. And... Uh, well, let's see. Department A, um, woo, women are actually admitted at a much higher rate than men. Department B, women are still admitted at a higher rate. Department C, men are at a higher rate, but really not much. Hmm, this is still kind of the same. Men a little bit more here, but not much. And about the same. This is the paradox. What gives here? Uh... Supposedly, men are being admitted at a much higher rate than the women are, but in every single department, when we break it down, it's either about even, or, in one case, the women are admitted at a much higher rate. So how can this be? Well, it's actually fairly simple. Look at these numbers here. This is the number of people applying to these top two departments, okay? And what you see is a lot of men applied to these, to these departments. Not so many women. These happen to be the departments that accept students at the highest rate. Whereas these departments here, we had many more women applying than men, and they're way more selective, okay? A, a my, basically, these top two departments, a majority of the people get in. Whereas these departments here, where more women are applying, a small minority get in. So basically what it tells us is the women just happen to be applying to way more selective departments than the men are, and that's why we're getting a smaller admission rate for the women than for the men. Okay? This is a weird little paradox that, uh, that can happen where, as we saw, we get one result when we look at the whole, but we, we, when we break it down to the parts, you actually get the exact opposite result. Uh, don't spend a whole bunch of time looking at uh, Simpson's Paradox, but it is good to know exactly, you know, it is good to know what it is. 
and uh, uh, the general phenomenon. Okay? All right, that's it for this video. The next video, we're going to be looking at the analysis of quantitative data. See you then.